everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, and we have a little bit of a treat for you today. We're going to do some, well Marco is, review reading of some of our favorite thesaurus reviewers and people who either are a robot or a paid publicity person commenting on, I think, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. The latest episode. Which Hit was and run. Hit and run. Which wank, wank. Anybody, has anybody figured out what that refers to? Because I have been thinking and thinking and thinking. Nope, nobody has said yet. The only thing they can do is dislike. So they can't bother to comment and explain anything because I guess their, you know, their brain is just so damaged that they can't even comment anything about uh, the meaning of that. So first off, we have Mr. Thesaurus. He says, 8 out of 10, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. What? Oh, God. It was always going to struggle to be as magnificent as last time. But this is a solid change of pace. Focusing more on Jimmy and Kim. That's true. <laughs> they, st they step up their plan to pressure Howard in a hilarious yet credible caper. Caper to real link Cliff. Sorry. Oh, good job, Safi. Sorry, it's a poster. A superb performance from Rhea Seahorn, Kim. Oh, beautifully portraying fear, resolve, and concern. Both at being worried about being followed and Jimmy's gradual sawward shift. His what? Is His sawward shift. Look, sawward shift. Sawward oh, shift. Oh, okay. And it's hilarious because it shows made up word. this guy is another one of those, you know, instead of victim blamers, it's Jimmy blamers. You know, these people who act like Kim is just this, like, innocent bystander who watches Jimmy become Saul. <laughs> like, it's just such bullshit. And they're even showing you that she's, like, a villain now. And it's like, it's oh, it's still, like, uh It's just really bad with these fanboys. Now, here's, the, here's Mr. Emotional. You know, he got emotional last week. Let's see if this episode made him emotional, too. Nine out of ten. Then where is he? Who? Oh. This episode moves Jimmy one step closer to becoming Saul with his new clients, and most importantly with the last scene of the episode. The scene with him at the courthouse is also great, but kind of sad at the same time. It makes you wonder what his relationship with this people is going to be. Yeah, I, I, me too. Or is he going to completely leave and become a full-time criminal lawyer? Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, he has to deal with the court system this no matter was, what. This was a nice change of pace, as it was calmer than the breathtaking and heart-racing last two episodes. But it still had its intense scenes with Kim and what she has to deal with in this episode. I don't know about that. The opening of the episode with the two bikers is a great sequence that leads to a brilliant twist and scene with a particular character that I'm not going to spoil. Uh, but it's probably not a big deal. No. And not even a twist for people who remember from previous seasons and also Breaking Bad better than I do. Or people who saw the twist coming from a mile away. But personally, it was a twist nonetheless. And we actually got more lore from this character. We also have the first act where Saul continues on sabotaging the poor Howard's reputation. And it's simultaneously funny, brilliant, it's and stupid. a little edge of your seat at the end. Just like the Gold Club locker room scene in the first episode. <laughs> and they also bring back another character from Breaking Bad that I only remembered who she was when they dropped her off oh. at her <laughs> motel house thingy. Oh. I don't know if she was already in Better Call Saul or not, but I don't remember her being in previous seasons. Oh. Well, see, there I you go. I thought she was. No. She was not in Better Call Saul until now. 
Okay. And so there you go. You, these people prove they're not really fans at all if they don't know that. I mean, I know that. Uh, I also thought I saw a No Ho Hank in the middle of the episode. What? And it was obviously not him, but it was weird how similar he looked to Hank and how many people look like him. Also, add another bald guy to the Breaking Bad's universe list of bald guys. <laughs> Overall, it's a more tame episode compared to the two previous ones and gives us a better look inside the life of the mentioned character and also pushing Jimmy to become Saul. Although I feel like Kim is becoming more Saul than Jimmy. <laughs> Considering what happened to her in this episode, and the fact that she kept it from Jimmy. Not, not we don't know that. Well, just, just because she hasn't told him yet doesn't mean she's going to keep it from him. So far, this Saul doesn't seem like the Saul we know from Breaking Bad. <laughs> Whatever that means. This is hilarious, because this guy's just making my arguments for me. That's exactly what I said, is that this is not the Saul from Breaking Bad. And... And I feel like something really drastic and big is going to happen Me too. With, with him or, her or Kim to bring him on the verge of it. But we shall wait and see. Well, how about on the verge of Kim's not going to be there in Breaking Bad? How about that? What's going to happen to her? Oh, someone else says, 10 out of 10, the criminal lawyer. The word is out. This episode reminds us that the most important concept of this final season is to set how Jimmy turns into Saul. Everyone now knows what Jimmy did to help Lalo in court, and the business is booming. I like how the episode plays on the themes of paranoia. Mike reveals to Kim he had people in place following her and Jimmy because Lalo is alive. Kim was right to be on her guard, but Jimmy had a trail of thought that was solid, too. She could have felt that way because she got away with it. Wendy and Spooge are nice callbacks to Breaking Bad. I really like what they did with the first and her involvement with the Howard Caper. Cliff is definitely getting more and more unhinged. The directing is absolutely flawless. Good job, Rhea. The <laughs> use of music is also excellent. Actually, and, she did a good job. And more prominent in this episode, which helped raising the quality even higher. But, where the hell is Lalo? Good question, the bud. The suspense continues. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Okay. 10 out of 10. I think that's good. No, it's not. I like a 9 out of 10. The building blocks of Saul's final transformation. <laughs> I like this episode. Jimmy's com conversion into Saul over the series has been long waited, and we finally start to see the grasp of the goofy criminal lawyer. <laughs> the goofy? <laughs> that extracts that very character we know and enjoy. Not as strong as the last episode. But that was Nacho's story. This moves more <laughs> on to the motive for Kim and Jimmy. With Kim learning a truth shaking her feel for safety while supporting Saul. It becomes tensional for what's to come with a funny yet interesting arc for a good episode. It also gives me Breaking Bad vibes. Mm. I can feel the connection at this point between the two shows like two halves of string being stitched together. A solid episode on development with a good sense of nostalgia. 8.7 out of 10. P.S. I've only just found out this episode was directed by the very Rhea Seahorn herself. Nice. <laughs> okay, well... Nine out of ten. Slower, but significant. Kim and Saul continue their plan to discredit Howard. And why? With a fun cameo from Wendy. 
Cliff still wasn't quite ready to throw Howard under the bus, though. Possibly because of his son's history with substance abuse. Oh. Gus gets paranoid and has people watching anybody who Lalo might approach. And has his house bugged at Timbuktu. Yeah. The one shot of him going through that secret tunnel was fantastic. The court has completely disowned Saul like a leper after news of him helping Lalo is broken. And because of negative attention, he's drawing to the nail bar. He has been kicked out and must find a new place to practice. Which is when we finally see that iconic lot from Breaking Bad. It's also worth mentioning we see Spooge. Spooge? Although he's looking a little healthier here. Perhaps Walt's superior product destroyed more lives than we might have thought. Ooh, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> Overall, a slower but still important episode with a few great cameos. Fantastic acting and cinematography and a good score. A strong 8 to a light 9 out of 10. <laughs> let's see. The word is spreading. Never lose. Oh, let's do this. The first half of this episode might make this the funniest episode of all time in the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul universe. <laughs> this was a fun one to watch for the entire runtime and added a deal of variety to the traditional Saul form formula. <laughs> Let's see, what else do we have here? This show is amazing. 10 out of 10! Oh, God. <laughs> Expected change of pace in this episode since they have 13 overall, and it's still an absolute pleasure to watch. Finally, more of Jimmy who's going full Heisenberg here. No looking what? back, just straight forward to becoming Saul. <laughs> he didn't even do that much in this episode. What in the heck? I'd say that Jimmy is dead and Saul is the only one left. <laughs> Jimmy will never be dead to me. <laughs> the criminal lawyer is here. <laughs> A lot of references to Breaking Bad. Nice interactions we've never seen before. Just top-notch TV. Doesn't get better than that. And it doesn't need crazy pacing to be that. We're probably seeing one of the best, if not the best, seasons of TV ever. So let's enjoy it. Mm, God. You like these reviews, Sophie? Yeah, I think I've had enough, though. 10 out of 10, vulnerability. <laughs> vulnerability. Because of Saul's love for Kim, they continue to break Howard. <laughs> so you're saying that that's not Saul's idea, that's her idea. His transgressions are relatively tame. But Kim has become so judgmental and driven to help the weak, she has singled him out. Well, the scenes involving the use of the car and makeup are entertaining. They seem at times superfluous. What, what, wait, what's superfluous? <laughs> the scenes are where they use the car and makeup, you know, the whole thing. Caper, the first caper. Oh, yeah. I, that, I thought that, that was cool. Yeah, I liked that It looked that like part. A, that, he made a face. That His was face. the best part of the episode. And that face he was making was just like Howard. I don't know how he did that. But humor, hum, humorous interludes create tension in their own ways. In the process, Soul has gotten closer and closer to the nasties. The nasties? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> It's a nasty. They now see him as their angel. What stands out is how really fragile both Jimmy and Kim are. She knows that danger lurks around every corner, and meeting Mike shoves it right in her face. Well, maybe she should have it shoved in her face instead of the stupid thing they're doing with Howard. Gus they is need becoming to get real. Gus is becoming so paranoid he lives in a bunker. He is still his old self. Yeah. But he would not be 
he would be not match for a bullet. Wallow is out. <laughs> Wallow is out there somewhere, and for now, Jimmy and Kim are okay. Why would Wallow do that, though? You know, to me, that doesn't make sense. He is on. He is jump bail. And how much is that bail? A million dollars or whatever. How, do you remember how much the bail was? Uh, multiple millions. And uh, so, why would he want? He should be going to Europe or something. He shouldn't. Why would he want to hang around there? 10 out of 10. The show popped tonight. It popped, Sophie. Popped. It popped. I don't think so. That's uh, that's millennial language for, like, it was good. You know, instead of saying it was good, you have to say something pops. Oh, I know. I've heard that with the color popping, with clothes, and with hard goods, and all about the popping bullshit. No more to say except my blood pressure went sky high. I didn't. When Mike was at the restaurant lunch counter. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> what? I, you I must be insane. I have loved every season of Saul, but it has reached far beyond of whatever my expectations were. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. They're like it, that, it was very low key. That little dialogue scene in the in the restaurant, my blood pressure was sky high. <laughs> well, she did. She was frightened. You could tell at the end of it her conversation with him that she was not the same. She would had been taken down a few notches because the all that crap they've been doing, he sees. He he told her, he says, I I know I know that you guys are up to something and I don't care. All I care about is this law low guy and finding him. We got a couple more. Ten out of ten creativity and persuasion. A great full episode in terms of directing story, and events that increases enthusiasm for the end. Kim's directing herself for this episode is a beautiful and wonderful thing. The series continues to convince me that there are no mistakes in it. This is no less than Breaking Bad. Mm. The truth of this series has reached a terrifying stage of perfection. So, see, it's like these people can't see flaws in anything oh Breaking Bad related. Like, even if they tried to, they can't see flaws. Well, lucky for you, I guess. But I'll tell you, if you're selling stuff and you didn't see it at first and then you're cleaning it and processing it and then you find there's a hole in there, you're very, you're very unhappy about finding, quote, the flaw. So... Okay, here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Let, here's the children one. Crossing paths. Eight out of ten. I don't think anything I write is really a spoiler, but I'm going to err on the side of caution and label my review as a potential spoiler. After Rockin' Hard Place... I wasn't expecting any major developments in today's episode. It was about what I expected. Many people have complained about the slowness of the show, and I am sure this episode will receive many of those complaints. I am not Why? one who has an issue with the pacing of the show. Nobody should expect major happenings in every episode. Why? It's almost over. That would take away much of what makes this show special. I was pleased to see an appearance of a couple of minor characters of Breaking Bad, as well as an unexpected meeting between two of Better Call Saul's main characters. With only a handful of episodes remaining, I eagerly anticipate Monday nights at 9 p.m. Why? Nothing happened. And children, please try to behave when posting reviews. And so you can see also these these fanboys, they're condescending. They're saying basically anyone who, re who writes negative reviews mm. about Better Call Shit Saul, they're children. And so that just shows how fucking uh, evil these people are, these uh, fanboys. I don't know about evil, they're just goofy. 
They're dipshits. Goofy, goofy, goofy. And then, no, listen to this. This one's really sickening. Parents of the Fear Maker user, please show him love. Episode is always top-notch quality, but this is no, not sorry. what this review is about. There is a user here called the Fear Maker who obviously needs a lot of attention because, really? he, because he never got it from his parents. So oh I'm asking God. his parents for once in their life to show him love and soften his soul. Oh my God. So as you can see, once again, these people have no respect for other people's opinions. Uh, and so here we go. Okay. Do 10 out of 10. Do people expect another death? That was a well-written and well-directed episode. People forgot how Better Call Saul's episode's pace is. It's only the fourth episode, and the story is really moving forward, and it's building to something huge. I hope so, because it doesn't look like it right now. We have to give credit to Rhea Seahorn. I can't believe it's her first time directing an episode. Well, she did a very good job. Okay, last one. Which would you rather hear, finally or growing paranoia? I don't care. <coughs> Just better hurry up. Nine out of ten. <laughs> Slower, but still engaging. <coughs> I'm honestly so afraid for Kim. This episode focuses a lot on her character with dealing with this new aspect of the life of the quote-unquote wicked, the paranoia, and the constantly watching over your shoulder. Learning that Lalo is alive only makes the worse, of course. Well, you know, he did jump bail, and they know he's a bad killer. The encounter between Kim and Mike is perfect, in its swiftness and simplicity. The last scene where Kim watches over the shoulder as she walks into the night honestly gave me shivers. Ooh. <laughs> One of those instances when there is no need for dialogue to communicate what a character is feeling and where it's going. It's all there in that look of paranoia. What do you think? Uh, these reviews are terrible, Safi. I, I mean, I, it, it, she's uh, upset, but I think it's fear, not paranoia. They're so bad. Like these reviews, they they don't give any legitimate reasons for why this episode is good. They all just say the same things. They say it's about Jimmy turning into Saul. They say that uh, Rhea Seahorn did a great job directing, which we said in our review, uh, which apparently doesn't matter, I guess since we said it. And, uh, you know, they just all say the same shit. Like, oh, it's slower, but it's fine, even though if this was another show, we would be complaining about it. <laughs> so these reviews are pretty bad, Sophie. Well? Are you done? No. Are you, are you done listening? I've been listening the whole time. I'm commenting on everything. I don't know what, what you want from me. Well, is that it, Safi? I guess that's it. If you like this, Marco's reading of the reviews of the latest Better Call Saul, hit and run. Although, please, someone, if you've seen the show, tell me what hit and run refers to, because somehow it's, it's escaped me, and I, was, I still don't know. I was really disappointed that Mr. Thesaurus did not really, he didn't really break out the terms this week, like he... He kind of just settled down, you know, it's almost like the episode bored him so much that he wasn't able to, like, stimulate his brain to think about uh, longer, complicated words I just use. think that there wasn't much going on, so what could he do? I, I, he could say some, he could do some string of words that nobody knows or cares about. I, I could help him with that, I'm real good at it. No, you couldn't. Sure I could. No, you couldn't. But I don't want to, because I've got work to do. Goodbye, everybody! Bye!